Here's the crowd gathering outside the front of Whitehall Classroom Building. And here comes Mr. Booker. Hello. Hey, hey Lamine. Hey. How y'all doing? It's good to see y'all. I'm gonna get some hugs and warm up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you one. Thank you. I'll take it. Of course. Good to see you. Did you like that video? Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, I didn't even know she had on the time. <laughs> All right, this one. This one. <laughs> All right, well, you want to go first? I'll let you go first. Go on the way. Uh, how y'all doing today? Yeah. I know it's kind of cold out, you know. It's fall, you know. Warm up. We definitely know it's election season when it gets cold out here, you know. The last couple of weeks, we're knocking doors with gloves and coats on. But thank you for coming out today. I brought my friend right here, Charles Booker from Louisville. Woo! And if you don't know me, my name is Lumin Swan. I am running for State House in 93rd District, which if you're familiar with Lexington, the South Lexington, small area of that in the town, suburbs, Kobe Sack, stuff like that. But I am a UK alumni, this is home. I actually grew up on this campus, so it's good to be back. Um, it's that time of year, it's, you know, we're in crunch time, we're 22 days out. Time to knock on doors, have conversations with our friends and family, as to go to the polls on November 8th. I hope everybody is going to the polls on November 8th, right? Hell oh, yes! Yeah. Hell yes! Or are we going to early vote? We got three days in advance of November 8th to go early vote. Or if you're, you know, out of your home, home county, our home state, I hope you got that absentee ballot, if you did. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of important issues on this ballot here in Kentucky. Um, we got two constitutional amendments on the ballot. We got everything from our next U.S. Senator all the way down to city council races here in Lexington. So get out and write that vote. I'm gonna pass this on to my guy right here, Charles Booker. We have a little conversation with you, get to know you. Again, thank you for coming out today. Thank you, Lamine. Okay, so first of all, I need y'all to understand how historic it will be to send Lamine to Frankfurt. Y'all know I've served in Frankfurt. It is crazy there. And we need folks that understand challenges that regular people face, that care about us and not big money interests that actually want to fight for Kentuckians. And I can say that Lamine has proven himself that he's dedicated. He want, He's an educator. He's an advocate. We need him in Frankfurt. Yes. So yes. as much as I'm trying to organize and beat Rand Paul, we got to win down the ballot too because there is so much work to do. Um, I'm not going to talk to you really long. I actually want to hear from you all, and yeah. I know the wind is like having a good time. <laughs> um, but if you don't take anything from this moment, you know, whether you're in between class or whatever you got the rest of the day, I hope that you see in the two of us the proof of your voice. You know, I always say that no matter where you're from, what you look like, whether you're walking or using a wheelchair, your pronoun, how much money you have in your pocket, what faith you practice, whether you practice or not, like whoever you are, you're important. You have a voice. Your voice matters. Your life matters. And your government should work for you. And look, we can have differences on policies and nuances, but at the end of the day, there are certain foundational points of humanity that we all should be able to come together on. No one should have to ration our medicine to stay alive. Everyone should be able to pursue a career, dream big, surpass them. I still have student debt. My wife and I still have six figures in student debt. I come from the hood. I come from one of the poorest zip codes in Kentucky. Both my parents dropped out of high school. So it's essentially saying that if you don't come from money, it's gonna be hard for you to do anything to change your lived your circumstances for your family. So I believe that it's criminal at this point to put all this debt on folks who are just trying to build a better future for our country. 
So we should cancel student debt. And college, it should be free. I'm telling you, I know this because I'm struggling to pay my student loans right now. And, Same here. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, we, and we qualify for some of the relief from President Biden, which again, yes. you know, regardless of whether you agree with a lot of, or everything he's done, look, you're not gonna agree with everything with anyone, first of all. But elections have consequences. And the fact that we have someone in the White House even though we had to wear him out to have him keep his promise, he did, <laughs> and, can, and agreed to cancel some student debt. That's a big step forward. We gotta keep going. But I just hope that you can see the, the fruits of, of your advocacy, of your voice, because I wouldn't be here if it weren't for y'all. Um, my campaign, honestly, it's not really about beating Rand Paul. Like, I was going to cuss. Forget Rand Paul. <laughs> Forget Rand Paul. I, you know, I'll say something else later. But we'll cuss for us. you. It's about regular people. It's about Kentucky, regardless of what your party is or your background. I just believe we deserve better. Kentucky is brilliant. It's beautiful, and then you're gonna see it, man. Everywhere you go, you're gonna find hardworking, dedicated people. Kentucky should not be one of the poorest states in the country. Kentucky should be a place where everywhere you go. You can be safe, you can be healthy, you can have money in your pocket, and you can live a good life. That's all I'm trying to do. And if that means we gotta change the system to do it, fine, let's do it. So, <laughs> so with that, I think you said it's 22. I don't know who's counting, but it's like 21 days um, until election day. We're gonna make history, but in these last few weeks, we gotta work. This is what organizing is all about right now. Talking to your neighbors, talking to your classmates, family and friends. Help spread the word because a lot of people, and this is why I'm so proud of my brother here, because a lot of people have given up on politics. And I don't blame, if you have felt like that, I do not blame you. I have felt that. We gotta push through that anyway. Because folks like Rand Paul are hoping that we sit down. They're hoping that we just throw our hands up and walk away so they can keep screwing us. So if we work together over the next couple of weeks, all the work we've been doing, we're gonna win this race. We're gonna win this race. We're gonna shock the country. Y'all ready to do it? Yes, okay. yes. All right, all right. Woo! 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 Well, I don't, I don't know about, about you. I, I wanna hear from you. Yeah, I wanna hear from y'all. Cause y'all are, you know, y'all gonna set precedence for you know, 20, 40, 60 years in Washington and Frankfurt, you know, we're the old guys, so. Yeah, man, <laughs> these grades are coming in. Right, and, right. And we, we will work for you. Definitely. We're here for you. It's, this is not about us getting a title. We're here to work yeah. for you, so I. That's why I'm running, you know, I'm not running for special interests, I'm not running uh, to get favors or in boardrooms or not, you know, I'm here for you. Um, if y'all don't know, I'm an organizer and here in Lexington, uh, during the Black Lives Matter summer 2020, I was on the streets for 60 days straight. You know, making sure, you know, you know, things were just. So, you know, I want to do the same thing in Frankfurt, you know, represent you all. You know, I want to re rep, you know, I'm, you know, this is not my district, but, you know, you know, I want to have alumni. I want to have students in my district. So I want to make sure you, you are getting um, the best education you need, you, you can't get. Uh, make sure you don't have to, you know, you know, I'm going to fight to make sure y'all don't have to come out with more student debt than you need. You know, um, they need to correct the funding uh, for public institutions and higher education here in Kentucky. Uh, y'all are kind of, you know, getting shortchanged right now. So I want to make sure, I, you know, I'm going to be the voice for you. And also, if, you know, the guy that overlays this district, Chad All, he's going to definitely fight for y'all. You know, he's not in the ballot, he won his election back in, in the primary, so he's ready to fight for y'all. So, I, you know, definitely get out next week, uh, I'm sorry, next month, vote, vote for us, you know, vote for y'all, you know, y'all, y'all in the next generation, so, you know, y'all want to set president, so. Man. But we want to hear from y'all, yeah. Don't be shy, you know, I'm going to go check. So. I'll, look, I'll probably <laughs> do a question. Um, what's pissing you off? <laughs> yeah, you want to go? What, what should I start with? What's pissing me off? Look around. Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, I call it climate chaos at this point. Climate chaos, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I see when I drive through rural Kentucky, um, there are often a lot of people that uh, the only jobs that they really have are just part, simple part-time positions at like, you know, daycares or, or working at like, one of, my, one of my best friends, she works at a Fizzoli's down in Somerset because that's the best job that she can find. I've been to the facilities too. On addressing those issues and trying to get to the root, the root of that problem. I appreciate you sharing that. I don't know if all of y'all heard, but um, it was essentially, what's your name? Forrest. Forrest? Yeah. Love that. So Forrest was talking about economic opportunities and, and the lack of them. And for a lot of communities in Eastern Kentucky, but all across the Commonwealth. So that's really why I say from the hood to the holler, because although communities might not look the same, the geography might not look exactly the same, a lot of those struggles are really true. And one of them is, it's hard to find places to work and have enough money in your pocket. And that's why having folks in Frankfurt and certainly in Washington is critical because from a, a federal level, we can drive investments to Kentucky that can help create jobs, help build our infrastructure so businesses will be able to thrive, support small business, support family farmers, really make the investments in, in our education so that we can break down those barriers. And I support a policy, I don't know if y'all heard much about this, um, Dr. King spoke about a guaranteed annual income. Yes. yes. And essentially he said that your worth as a human being is more than an hourly wage, which means that just because a corporation's like, all right, I'm gonna give you $10 an hour, $11 an hour, that doesn't mean all your needs are gonna be met. And you should have financial freedom, just like we give corporations. We will give them unlimited dollars, thinking that it's going to trickle down, and it never does. So I say, let's invest directly in people. And make sure that whether you're working or in school, that you have a monthly um, amount of money that you can use towards expenses, to live off of, to invest. Um, this is a way that you can become investors as well and create wealth. So that's why elections matter, man. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, definitely to spin on that. Early, um, I didn't have a primary opponent, but um, I met a nurse early in, early in the election. Um, she's actually a nurse here at uh, Good Samaritan. Um, she has to drive 100 miles round trip every day because there's no jobs in her county uh, as a nurse. So just imagine, you know, she's working five days a week. That's 500 miles, you know, a week. Gas money right now, you know. So that's even into her income. So again, guarantee, you know, the guarantee income, you know, that could be, um, you know, someone that's gonna make it a little bit better on that nurse. So, you know, it's out there. I'm ready to go to Frankfurt to make sure, you know, you know, I, I hear college students, you know, that, you know, have master's PhDs, you know, working at Trader Joe's right now because they're making more money than they could actually in academia or in their field. So. I uh, want to fight just to make sure you be able to come out, you know, light on student debt, be able to go in the field that you want to practice in. You know, that's what we're here for. All right, so y'all got to tell me how much time we got. And yeah. Plus, I, I know it's a little cool. You got your hood, hoodie. <laughs> yeah, we got about 20 minutes. Okay. So we can walk around. Okay, all right. Well, I know we're we going to move too. Um, I want to give somebody else a chance, though. Just... I have a personal question for you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, being a black man specifically and representing a state like Kentucky and with all the racial adversity that you would have to face and just being in the public office in general is hard. I wanted to know how you maintain positivity in the face of adversity. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you for that question because I know you see me and the same love that came out of that question, I wanna make sure we send it to my brother when he goes to Frankfurt because I'm telling you, when I served in Frankfurt, I don't know if any of you all saw that that video. It's in the documentary. So I got this documentary from the hood to the holler at the beginning. Like they, they gaveled me to sit down. They cut my mic off. I was talking about how legislation like permitless concealed carry would increase the chances of folks who look like me of being killed because we often are seen as a deadly weapon before we're seen as a human being. And 
I was calling out the hypocrisy because the same folks that said it was okay for my humanity to be taken away for political points want to ban all abortion under the guise of wanting to protect life. <laughs> as if the person who's pregnant, it's like, doesn't matter. And so I was calling out that hypocrisy and I'll tell you, it is exhausting. It is exhausting. I'm, I'm never gonna BS you. It has been the hardest thing I've ever done to be vulnerable about my identity and about my humanity in spaces where it doesn't always seem like folks care about my humanity. But I know my why. I got a lot of love and prayers around me. And I just think of the privilege that I have to do this for y'all. And for my three girls, my, my boss. <laughs> Like I, I will, it's like when you know your why, when you know what gets you up, you know, and even in class, when you know what drives you. Like my mom didn't graduate high school. She's my super hero. She sacrificed so that I could have a chance to go to school. I told her, I'm going to do well for you. And so when we launched the bus tour this morning, she's standing with me in front of the bus. I'm like, I'm going to do well because I love you. I'm proud of you. And now I think about my little girls. I got to make sure that the world's better for them. So I'll do whatever. I'll face whatever hate. And you know what I've learned? Why we're gonna win this race? Love is stronger than hate. Yeah. Love is stronger than hate. Look, I don't, we got folks that voted for Trump organizing on the campaign. And at the end of the day, when you show up and you treat people like they matter and listen, not to judge you, even if we disagree, you can build bonds. Um, but it's hard. So if you're organizing and let me not, let you speak to it. We got to lift up one another. We got to lean into community. And so while I'm working to earn your support, I'm hoping that y'all walking with me. And when I say we locking arms, I'm leaning on y'all too. Just like you said, sis, uh, two daughters. Uh, I don't have kids, but I got a 10 year old nephew. Just bright, he's really bright. He's, you know, but you know, he's my encouragement. Every time I talk to him, it's like, did she win the election? Did she win the election? Uh, he hasn't got the concept. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of a key thing to his life tomorrow. You should tell him yes every time. Right. <laughs> right. But um, I just sent him a t-shirt. And he's going to campaign it and woo for right now uh, for me uh, way out of the district. But, you know, I may have, might, might have somebody that knows somebody down in my district. You know, you definitely got to use your voice, you know. If you want to see change, you got to use the power of your voice. You got to use the power of organize. I don't care if it's just tweeting a friend, uh, doing a TikTok to your friends, having a conversation with your parents. Um, there's, there is a student here at UK that um, got her mother to uh, change registration. And now it's a Democrat, and it's going to vote for my friend right here, Charles Booker. Yes. I'm uh, going to vote for constitutional amendments uh, this year. So, we, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we got to have those hard conversations. Get your friends out. You know, um, a lot of people think your vote doesn't count down because, it's, you know, corporations, dark money, all that. It does count. There's a state representative here that her, her first – First, uh, the last election, she won her seat by 48 votes. 48 votes. So your vote doesn't matter. Get out there, vote, have that conversation. It's not too late to organize. You know, sign up, sign up with a campaign. It doesn't have to be Charles' campaign, my campaign. It might be a city council race. Sign up. Get those yard signs out. Knock a few doors. You know, have those conversations with neighbors that you may not know every day, but. You know, that conversation may change your decision in voting or even going to vote. These are midterms. No, nobody votes on midterms. For those for years, you know, you, you know, the whole block comes out. But this is a time midterms matter. Midterms matter. You know, Charles Booker, you know, Senate matters. But your down ticket races matter, too. Uh, it's a triple up. You know, what happens in, in Frankfurt triples in Washington. So get out there, vote. Have those conversations, you know, what they said back in the day, rock the vote. That's it.
Yeah. Where we where we about to go? Because I got an idea real quick. We about we about to walk. Okay. Okay. All right. We gotta do something for social media. Yeah. So I sort of want. Can okay. So y'all y'all.